Hello, I'm Jeff Groff, Winter Tours Estate Historian. And today I want to talk to you about the dining room porch. We're up on the fifth floor level off the DuPont dining room. I think everybody in, in recent months has been thinking about outdoor spaces and how they can move some of their living outside. Well, when the house was expanded in 1930 and 31, HF DuPont wanted to create an outdoor dining room that was accessible for the kitchens and the main part of the house. And this is the incredible space he created that soars two stories tall. The idea was certainly in the years before air conditioning to have a number of places connected to the house that would work well for outdoor life. So there's the, this dining room porch below is a loggia, a large open area. There's a gazebo out on the east terrace. The conservatory spilled out onto patios in other areas. And even on the front of the house, uh, when the completion in 1931 of the addition, there was a porch next to the Empire Parlor. But this space, as I said, really was for an opportunity to enjoy in spring, particularly summer, some nice outdoor dining. Now, behind me is this whole colonnade of columns. And H.F. DuPont's idea was to recreate something that was sort of historically inspired. And for them, he looked towards a great historic house in Philadelphia called the Woodlands. And so these columns and their arrangement are based on the giant portico at the Woodlands. Now try to picture this place back in the, the time when he is using it for country house parties. Down this whole extent of the porch was a very long table. It was a Shaker community dining table that he had purchased and originally used at his Southampton house, Chestertown, up on Long Island. He then brought it down here after the wing was added onto Winter Tour. And so the table would stretch much of the porch. It was surrounded by 20 Windsor chairs. And then back against the wall were some additional chairs that could be used for extra people. Also picture kind of marching down the table were a wonderful array of eagle figures. Uh, he loved eagles, as we know. They were carved wood. Some of them were met metal. Now, another thing that's very intriguing about this space are the chandeliers that are hanging above me. These are actually reproductions that were made several years ago because the original ones, we worried about their condition, uh, about their being out in, in the weather and the elements, so we carefully reproduced them, and the originals are now in our storage collection. Those originals were purchased in 1930 by one of H.F. DuPont's uh, antique dealers, who was also a good friend, Lloyd Hyde, to be used here at Winter Tour. Interestingly, they came out of a synagogue in Bridgetown in the Barbados that was modernizing their buildings, so they were selling off some of the, the fixtures. Another kind of interesting thing about these is they can be lowered with sort of a pulley system down to the floor level here. So if you think of hurricane, tropical storms, some of the weather we've been having recently, there's the ability to take them down so that they wouldn't just be swinging freely. Well, that table I mentioned earlier eventually moved over to what is now the pavilion, the visitor center, and was used in a, a space there outside of Copeland Hall. And then in 1977, it was deaccessioned, uh, and this space became left more open as visitors passed through. But it still has a beautiful view today and back in the era of H.F. DuPont's entertaining, it would have looked out over the meadows, across towards the pasture land, up the hills to the, to the orchard. So another one of those remarkable spaces that H.F. DuPont so carefully crafted with his architect, Albert Ives. Thank you.